night around 17 Celsius. Is this copyright infringement? This all should burn <laughs> off pretty soon, and we'll have sunshine and 70 degrees. Have a great day. Oh, thanks, David, for tuning in. I'm glad to get you on Zoom directly to Andrew's phone for uh, the weather report to start us off. Uh, From May. David, you can go ahead and hang up. Yep. So here we are. We are back again. This is Small Brains Big Picks episode. Do you know this? Do you know what episode we're on? We are on episode 25 of all time. Quarter century. Quarter century. If each one of these feels like it takes a year to get through for you, then we are at (laughs) a quarter century. Um, My name is Andrew. And and I'm Evan. What's your your last name, Andrew? Alden. What's your last name, Evan? Prefer not to share. Oh, yep. Yep. (laughs) Um, We'll pixelate your last name and put it over (laughs) your face here. (laughs) And as always, our wonderful producer is here. Nice, nice. That's that's, that's the uh, traditional spelling. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> traditional spelling. Our producer is here. Yeah. Um, okay, so we are here, and we are about to do a starting five. She's here. She's here, and we are going to pr- perform a starting five. <laughs> um, so, but I, <laughs> quarter century crisis, man. Uh, this is our, our first episode, uh, I feel like, also in fall. Yes. So The um, autumnal season has We do have our us. sponsors. Our, Pumpkin Ale. Yep. Pumpkin for the dyslexic in this your is family. Why we, this is why we have guests. They keep yeah. us on track. Like, yeah, we are completely far afield. Does yours have a frog on it? Mine has all sorts of woodland animals. Yeah, an owl with arms. Yeah. So you, know, you know how this goes. The owl kills and <laughs> eats both of these little woodland creatures. I don't know if you can true. see that. Yep. Yep. But he, oh, he's taking the headphones off. Okay. Well, well, Evan has a costume change. I'd like to talk to you about Obscura Broadcasting's new and definitive set of fancy sheets. Fancy sheets are a high thread count. They are 2,000 for thread count. And those are all wrapped in one ball that you can put adjacent to your sheet. Um, um, so... Uh, let's get into the starting five. Okay. I'm not going to talk about the sweater. Let's just go right into it. Okay. First up, Steve Nash is a head is, was made a head coach last week. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. Uh, kind of dual thoughts. Um, I know some people had come out and I think rightfully. Do you think Canadians to, can't manage? Can't w- coach? I don't, I haven't heard that angle, but people pointed to the fact that, uh, there's now, uh, like a third of the African American head coaches in the NBA that there were ten years ago. There's only five of them. There's a lot of very qualified coaches who have had a lot of success in the past who have not been able to find jobs in the NBA anymore. Um, and Steve Nash has never coached a game at any level, I believe, of basketball in his life. I think he's coached soccer for his children. I don't believe he's ever coached Spread a game out, of basketball in together. his life. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. With that said, um, I think it's a little bit suspect when you think about the number of qualified coaches with track records. And if you, I'm sure you could have brought on Steve Nash as an assistant and let him build some build a reputation as a coach. At the same time, um, I've heard inter- a lot of interviews with Steve Nash, and uh, he seems like a really cool guy, really smart guy, um, cool, like good head on his shoulders, and like someone who really, really knows the game, and also is respected by everyone in the game. So I, I think he'll probably do a good job, but that's not to say that Mark Jackson or any of the other uh, unemployed African-American coaches wouldn't have done a better job. And and he definitely has a uh, reputation as a guy with a high, high basketball IQ. Right. However, you know, that the NBA is the forefront of the, of the movement for black lives in sports, and it's not necessarily the best look to have... Uh, you know, they have what five coaches? I believe four, it's. Five. I think it's four or five coaches, or five. and they had like thirteen in two thousand four. So yeah. that's not necessarily the best uh, yeah. optics. And uh, you just hope that he knows about the kickball rule. He's been coaching a lot of soccer. I know, I know. Yeah. You know, and and remember, you don't need to have the pass come out over square over your head. And yeah, yeah, not required. No. Um, all um, right. I'll take you to my first one. Okay, your first one. Um, so. 
uh, I want to take you on a little journey. Um, over the past five games, uh, the past three and the future two, the starting pitchers for the Boston Red Sox have been Chris Mazza, Ryan Weber. Heard of him. Today, Andrew Triggs. Have not heard of him. Tomorrow, off day, probably our best pitcher. And on Wednesday, or on uh, Tuesday, our second best pitcher, undecided. Oh, um, yes. What do you think of this year's Red Sox rotation? Well, it's nice that, the, that Triggs has been able to get that day pass from Walpole State Penitentiary <laughs> to come and pitch for the Red Sox. Um, the, <laughs> the Red Sox have really found, an, you know how like a few years ago they had bullpen by committee and it was a widespread failure. It was like Theo Epstein's first thing is just like, you don't need a closer, which ironically has now been proven. Like the Rays have 10, diff- their first 10 saves were by 10 different guys, yeah. which had never happened yeah. before. Um, uh, but the Red Sox are going by a complete link. They're like anybody in the greater Boston area can pitch for the Red Sox this year, yep. which is great, which is a great community engagement yep. program. Yep. However, <laughs> that, not, not great for W's. Not great for W's. <laughs> the Red Sox have 14 wins as of uh, there's a game going on right now, which they still can lose. And uh, Mookie Betts has 13 home runs. Uh, so that's not a great look. Um, I do feel like undecided TBA and off day are the best pitchers the Red Sox have to throw at uh, another team. Off day is undefeated on the year. Yeah. Uh, he, so he, we'll he, he also see. hasn't won. Yeah. Yep. We'll yep. see. Um, that doesn't mean they can't lose on off days. Uh, the, this Red Sox team could figure out a way to do it. Yep. Um, okay. So speaking of baseball players, Mike Trout, that's his real name, um, is the fastest player. <laughs> Mike Trout is the fastest player to 300 home runs and 200 stolen bases in history. Will he go down as the greatest player of all time? N- not if he doesn't ever win anything. I mean, he's barely his team's barely ever made the playoffs. It doesn't look like they will this year. Um, they they were always bad. It's not necessarily his fault. Baseball is, I'd say, more than any other sport. I think even more than football which has bigger rosters, a game where you just can't win. One guy doesn't make as big of an impact Mm -hmm. as basketball, as a lot of sports. Definitely not as much of an impact as golf. One guy makes a huge impact on a squad in golf. Uh, But no, I think think statistically he will be up there with all of the greats. Um, If he doesn't ever win anything and he just signed another 10 years with the hapless Angels, uh, there will always be that question mark where... People who care about that kind of thing will question him. And as the Angels continue to flounder, do you think that it's it's imperative <laughs> upon the uh, Angels to put together a squad that can compete? I mean, yeah. Like, it's isn't it imperative upon all ownership? I would guess that there are some teams in baseball that do not care if they they like they their best outcome is to make the playoffs. The Pirates. Yeah. Yeah, that could be true uh, to an extent. I mean, I think if Trout never they don't even put it made, on their like banner. If Trout know? never does anything um, in in the playoffs, never even competes for a World Series, I think it'll be something that people talk about when they bring up his legacy. I I would be curious to find out who has the most home runs of someone who has never played in a World Series. I'm sure you'll look it up and put a graphic right here. No, what? If it, it might be a hard thing to look up, but yeah. we could look it up. Um, okay, do you want my next one? Do you want me to go two in a row? No, or? I, got, I got you. Okay. Um, so, uh, more serious one here. Um, Trump, the guy who uh, lives in the Oval Office. Um, mm, mm, heard of him. He uh, tweeted a series of tweets, in, including one he that said... He did. Uh, is that it? <laughs> including one that said that the Department of Education is looking into um, the possible use of the New York Times 1619 project in California schools, and if so, if this is true, they will not be funded. This was right on the tail of Trump also banning or purportedly banning racial sensitivity training in uh, federal workplaces. Um, yeah, what what do you think of this recent Trump uh, madness? Um, well, you know, it's it's almost par for the course at this point. However, I think that that. You know, they say the first step of admitting a problem is it is is saying that there is a problem, right? The first step of, of solving any problem is admitting there is one, and um, it just seems very transparent to me that with what with the California rule and the and the ruling on uh, getting rid of race training, like racial insensitivity training, is that Trump doesn't want 
you know, it completely goes against this whole idea that there is no problem, that it's not a widespread thing. It's just governments and local and state governments that are run by Democrats. It's not a, mm-hmm. a country program, which to me is par for the course for him. I mean, it's also like I you got to wonder, like, he is so amazing at keeping his name in the news. And it doesn't, it's every like small thing because mm-hmm. we can't even follow up this. We won't be able to follow up what happens with this because it will just be on to the next thing. Right. He'll call the, the you know, dead veterans, losers. And even if know. we had a podcast every day, we wouldn't be able to follow this up. Right. And you never hear, I mean, that's the thing is at this point, we report the headlines, but we never really follow up on any of his yeah. crazy asinine claims because you, they move too quickly. Like he, Apparently, cut funding for the Stars and Stripes, the the newspaper that the um, uh, the military uses as like their in house newspaper to like mm-hmm. report and do stuff. It's been around since the you know, 150 years or something. He cut the funding to that, and but that was also on the same day that he said that you know all people who died in war are losers. Yeah. So yeah. you know he just keeps you know he knows how to use the 24 hour news cycle to keep his name out there for better or for worse. Mm-hmm. Because he doesn't care. I think he just doesn't care. Yeah. It's not, uh, no other words. Yeah. It is, it is, he is what he is. Right. And I'm going to pull up, uh, I have another, my last one is a Trump one too. Oh God. Um, Too much. We should have conferred. Yeah, we don't, we, yeah, we should. Hate to double up on Trump. Yep. Well, it's kind of about Trump. A number of ships sank in the, in the ill-fated Trump's boat parade. Um, Do you think that the Coast Guard has has to come and save these people, or is it kind of a, uh, you know, survival of the fittest out there? Because you know the Trump supporters mm-hmm. are the fittest people on the planet Earth. Well, the best boaters, um, the best, the best uh, of all things. No, I think, uh, you know, you definitely stop short of ever wanting, or hopefully you stop short. I stop short of uh, wishing uh, serious misfortune on people. Um, However, but I, I definitely had a, a glimmer come to my eyes uh, seeing people uh, have their boats sink to the bottom of the ocean with their Trump flags along with it. Um, mm. It was nice. It seemed poetic. Um, it seemed like, uh, you know, uh, Neptune at work or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So it's been confirmed Poseidon yeah. is a Democrat. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Breaking news. <laughs> Breaking news. Poseidon for Biden. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Wow! Oh, there you go. That's that's the, the, first. that's the name of the episode. Yep. Um, <laughs> so moving right along, we're going to do something we haven't done in a while. So we're going to roll that wonderful intro we haven't heard in a long time. Would you please, for the love of God and your own body, hold the hammering? So, as is par for the course in summer when there's not too many sports, just baseball. And who wants to really watch baseball? Because that's boring, to, boring to death. Another end of summer classic is the spelling bee. I think that's when it is. Um, and we are going to have our very own spelling bee of baseball players here. Yeah. Um, me and Evan, I am a notable, terrible speller. And Evan is notably left-handed um, in both his spelling and in his uh, knowledge. Uh, so we are going to do some, let's let's take some easy one. Let's try an easy one right off the top. Teresa, you can pull one from from that list, maybe near the middle. An easy one, just a test. Who are we starting with? Am, well, I, am I first? I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll go first for the test. Here's here's the first one. What's the first one? Jared Saltalamachia. Okay, that's an easy test one. Um, <laughs> S A L T A Can I have the country of origin, please? Um S-A- I was, was going to use that joke on my first one. S A L T A M A C C H M A I A. Is that right or wrong? You forgot the lie. You went salt machia. Okay, Evan's turn to try the same one. Salted macchiato. Okay, <laughs> here comes Evan. Yeah, here comes. Oh, I get the same one. Yeah, you get the same oh, one. That's bullshit. S A L T. A L A M A C C H I A. Wow. Nice. Nice. One point for Evan. Okay. 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 You're feeling like a pimp. Uh, Evan Evan can stays on. All right. All right. Um Shay 
Hillenbrand. Spell uh, Shea as well. S H E A space H I L L E N B R A N D. You weren't supposed to tell him to sp- also spell Shea. He'd start on Hillenbrand and then you'd mark him wrong. But okay, we'll take it. Oh, well, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely there's some conferring going on. So I was yeah. up to Fixed nothing. Game. Fixed game. All right, Andrew, this one's for you, right? Or Yeah, I could take okay. this one. Bobby Door. Ooh. Uh, D-O-E-R-R. Didn't say Bobby. But we'll count it. I, I didn't specify. R-O-B-E-R-T. <laughs> yeah, are you guys only doing last names? We're only doing last names over okay. Shea Hillenbrand. Okay. All right, let's go for a harder one. Who, who's up? Uh, Evan. All right, the other trick to this is my pronunciation, so we'll see. Um, mm, we're going to skip that one. Billy Grabarkowitz. Mm. When you uh, cut your hand on a tree, you grab bark and wince. Remember that one? Yes. Throwback. Shout out, yep. Casey. <laughs> Episode 20, 25, we really covered all our material. <laughs> Uh, G R A B A R K E W. No wait, go bark away. W I C Z. Yeah, I'm gonna do a lot better on this one. Um, G R A B A R K A W I W E I T O. W T O Mark Markowito. Okay, Teresa, how do you spell the Markowitz? Go ahead and finish this one out. G R A B A R K E W I T Z. T Z, not C Z. Ah, thought he was a was wherever the people with the C Zs are from. Poland. Is that? That's. I was gonna say Polish, but I wasn't sure. There's a lot of Polish uh, ancestral players on this list. Okay. All Next right. up. Who's up? Uh, Evan. Okay. Jason is Ringhausen. Oh, uh, Jason damn. is Ringhausen. Uh, closer for the Cardinals for a long time. I S R I N G H A U S E N. I would have gotten that one too. Damn. Halsen. Halsen. Is Ringhausen. Ringhausen. All right, Andrew. All right. Love to the German Ready for heritage. This, this one, this one's hard. Brock Holt. H-O-L-T. You know when to show love to your competition. You know, sometimes yep. it's just it's, it's, just it's, great it's nice. effort. I'll take another one. You'll take another one? Yeah. Shohei Otani. Ooh, okay. Both names. Got to do yeah, both Yeah, you got to do both names on this one. S H. Good so far. O. Is it I E I? I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> I think it's S H O I E I, O H T A N I. Oh, this pains me. <laughs> you lost it on the first name. Yes, yeah, S H O H E I, right? Yep. <laughs> Evidence for the last name. He got it wrong. Oh. He he celebrated too early. He celebrated too early. Oh, H T A N I. No, no, no! It doesn't count. Three to one, Evan. Damn. Okay, Evan's up. Okay. Todd Stottlemyre. Hmm. Uh, part of speech. Oh, you should do first and last with this one. Can I get the part of speech? Todd Stottlemyre is a baseball player. Ah. Baseball player. Part of speech? <laughs> what is <laughs> stroke? Do you want to use it in a sentence? Is that what you're looking for? You're looking no, no, no. Like noun, verb. Oh, yeah, noun, pronoun. Oh, They're okay. all pronouns. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, T O D D. Um, S T O T T L E M E Y R E. Ooh. Ooh. I added an extra E in there, didn't I? Yeah, yeah you did. Fuck. T O D D S T O T T L E M E Y E R. Or you added the same E as me. <laughs> Fucking, he sucked anyway. 
fuck yeah, I don't even who's is that Mel's Mel's son, son. Ah. Mel's younger son uh, Mel Stalman, a longtime pitching coach for the Yankees. Todd Stalman, a longtime bum. All right, how many more we got? Did you say Mel? Yep. Who wants to spell Mel Ott? O T T. Fuck. I didn't know this was a buzzer system now. <laughs> All right. Is this how the official spell tree works? <laughs> it's whenever a kid gets the mic first. <laughs> Can you imagine a full contact spelling bee where people are like, <laughs> no. they're all lined up in their chairs and you say it. And <laughs> they all run. Like elbows thrown. Yep. So what's the score? Uh, three, four to two. Evan has four. I have, I have two. I think okay. that's accurate. Okay. Mm. This one's for you. Who's you? <laughs> Andrew. Oh, are you sure you have two? I think so. I thought you had three. You got Holt and, and, and <laughs> Ott. <laughs> Did you get any others? Is that really all you got? <laughs> I, so. and I, I got one letter off. I got 75% on Shohei Otani. <laughs> all right, ready? Steve. Oh, I cannot even say this one. Steve w- Wojciechowski. Oh, Jesus Christ. No one, neither of us are going to get this one. But I'm going to try. S T E. Could you use it in a sentence? <laughs> yeah, Steve Wojciechowski was definitely a baseball player. <laughs> And a, and a long-time coach, different Steve Wojcikowski. Okay. <clears throat> S-T-E-V-E space. W-O-J-C-H. I-E-V. E-S-K-I. Wojcikowski. That was kind of sensual. That you whispered. <laughs> but Evan had interference, so I think I'll count it. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I know the rules. I know yeah. the rules. Can, can, can Evan try to spell it now? Even though I've already earned this point. <laughs> yeah, so go now. ahead. Uh, say it again. Steve Wojcikowski. Wojcikowski. Wojcikowski? Okay. Wojcikowski. Wojcikowski. W O J, shout out to the Woj. Same guy. It's all one guy. There's only one yeah. Wojciechowski in the world. Uh, w O J. N I A K O S K I. Okay, let's hear that spelling. This one's incredibly hard. W O J C I E C H O W S K I. Oh, no chance. Yep. Yeah, Wh- that was probably the hardest one. Whoopsie. Okay, right, bring us in the home stretch here, Teresa. One more, one more. Are we out of people? No, we are not oh. out of people. Here we go. First and last. Mark Rezpinski. Who is this too? Andrew, thank you for buzzing in. Go ahead. <laughs> M-I-K-E. Last name to you, Evan. M- was his name Mark? <laughs> oh, whoops. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Such shame. Such shame. Okay. Say first his name again. Mark what? Mark Rezpinski. Rezpinski. R E C Z P I N S K I. R E C Z. Yeah. I was <laughs> betting on him being Polish. He is Polish. R Z R Z Rez Rezpinski. Oh, R- a straight R Z. It's R Z. Straight oh, up. There's Jesus. no, no, no it, raw dog. Uh, R Z. <laughs> R, R. This was not made for children. R Z E S. Pinsky. I'm, I'm sorry, have I already, have I already fucked it up. <laughs> raw dog, like a, like a. Let's let's try again. Let's try again. R. Okay. Let's try together. I think it's it is definitely R Z. Let's do it all together. Ready. R Z R Z. This, this isn't gonna work all together. Uh, yeah, you, you oh, say I it, then we'll say it back. R Z R Z R Z E P E P C Z C Z Y N Y N S K I S K I S K I. Well done. Well done. All right. Wow. Wow.
Yeah. Good job, guys. All right. Well, that brings us to the end. There's some notable players we didn't cover. Uh, Mark Grudzalonik. Ah, notable. Very notable. Uh, Mike Doug, Olt. Doug Mankiewicz. Doug Mankiewicz. Yep. Yep. Yeah, captivating yeah. stuff here. Yeah, here on small yeah. Rigs, rig picks. Well, that I get. I got. I got the signal from our uh, producer that we need to wrap it up uh, yeah. about ten got minutes that ago. That signal, yeah, yep. twenty five minutes ago. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, thank you so much for playing spelling bee with us. Um, <clears throat> as always, if you like us, like us. If you want to subscribe to us, uh, you can subscribe to us by sending us on a fifty dollar bill a to uh, one. Small Brains Big Picks Tower, Detroit, Michigan, 48231, and send us a $50 bill with subscribe written on it. Um, mm. As always, our is producer has been works? here, and my name is Andrew. Yeah, and uh, and I'm I'm Evan. We're going to get back to some, some guests next week. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Get back back on the on the track. Uh, shout out to uh, Amine's Limbo and uh, Big Sean's Detroit, too. Go listen. And also a big shout out to all of our service members serving all over the world, particularly in the post office. Amen. All right. See, see ya.